everybody. It's Hello. Friday. Hey, Yay. Gina. Time Yay. to wind down on this ready. Friday. <laughs> I'm doing great. You know what I just realized? I'm not hardwired. I didn't plug in my hardware. So hopefully my connection is good. I'm back down in Arizona. So here for the 107 degrees today. Ah, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's not 107 degrees here. It's nice though. It's nice exactly. and it's sunny. And yes. um, if you're listening, if, if anybody's out there and you're listening, you just say hello. But also if you hear a noise in the background, I'm up north. And there's construction next door. Um, and about 10 minutes ago, 10 minutes, maybe eight, uh, the big truck decided to come and park right outside our door and leave the motor or some motor for something running. So I if you hear this uh, big noise in the background, that's what it is. Jer's here. Hi, Jer. Hi, Jer. Jer. Too bad you're not here golfing. Yeah, well, he, he went golfing yesterday, so, so that's okay. I might actually go golfing tomorrow. I don't Sorry. even golf. Yeah, I might golf tomorrow, yeah. and I don't even golf. I might. Well, there you go. In 107 degrees, I don't know how you do that. Well, you go at 6:30 in the morning. Yeah, you're when yeah. It's, yeah, no. It's only 84. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so today, today, I'm so actually excited about this topic um, because it seems to be, you know, as I've said before, things seem to pop into my inbox when I've got something on my mind. And, and I have been doing a lot of thinking over the last couple of weeks, and I've been thinking about mission-driven businesses. So businesses that are obviously driven by uh, some kind of higher purpose. Right. And um, I think, you know, Gina, you and I were, were talking about this earlier, and that is that um, all of us, all of us probably had some kind of mission. Um, it says hide the agenda, but I don't see the agenda. Do you see it, Gina? No, I don't see it, but I won't. From my no, view, when I'm no, this side. it's supposed to be there, but it, but it's not. It's just not working. Okay, so, so yes, yeah, so um, and Gina, you were talking about the the mission that you had when you started your business. Yeah, well, you know, when when we started our business back in 95, there was one thing of Kirk and I just wanting to spend more time with our family, and so we started our business working together from home. But 10 years ago, when we shifted and started the social media side, yeah. managing social for people, I really did have this purpose. Of, I, I had so many women around me that were brilliant women who came out of the corporate world who had these marketing minds but they had to work they had to quit their jobs and stay home raising kids and so my purpose was i really wanted to create something that allowed people to be brilliant from home right and, uh, right. and so our, we started with five stay-at-home moms that did all the social media management and now on our team still everybody except one person um, I think there's only one that has no children and the rest are all stay at home moms, including, you know, my daughter who has a three week old baby. And then Kate on our team just went into the hospital last night to have a baby. So we still, my goal is always having these people be able to be brilliant at home. Um, it's not an outward facing like clients don't always know that that's our mission or our purpose. But the people on our team know that that's really important. Like when we have meetings, bring your kids. When, we, when we're when we on video calls, there's kids running in the background in their underwear, and we, we all laugh, you know. Yeah, so that's a really interesting point that you bring up about whether or not our clients are aware of our missions. Right. And whether or not that's necessary. Um, or even if it's not necessary, does it add something to differentiate our brand if our client is aware. So for example, this is not our mission is to inspire change that changes lives. And I would say that for about the first 10 years of my business, I thought my mission was something about, you know, inspiring people to be more innovative and all of those kinds of things. But Jer and I sat down, oh, probably eight years ago now, and, and that's what we came up with. And that really resonates for everything that I do is to inspire change that changes lives. And, and although I, I am positioned as a business speaker or a business consultant or a business coach, there's so many times where some idea happens in the course of, of our work with a client that impacts both their business and or their personal life. 
So right. when we did the new website, we put it up there. Um, and we've started to put it in a little more of our, um, of our materials because we think that that's really important that people understand that about us, that that's what we're about. And this, this article in Facebook that came out talks about which brands inspire consumers the most with their missions. And I found that really interesting because... The millennials, and one, another one of the articles said like 75% or 73% of, of millennials would pay more, would right. pay more to work with or be connected with the brand that they think is making a difference in the world. So I just wonder if it's not a little more important. I mean, the most inspiring brand on that list was St. Justin's Hospital. St. Jude's, yeah. St. Jude's, um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then Amazon was down seven, and then... There was some other big name that was right at the bottom of the list. On that list, Amazon surprised me because I thought, okay, what is their purpose? What's their mission? I, it, but I thought it was interesting because their mission is convenience. And I'm all about, like, I order everything. You know, like daily, there's Amazon deliveries to my house um, because it's convenient. And they talked about, you know, single moms. Why do you need to go, which I was even telling my daughter, why do you need to go hunt down a dog food store for her dog who needs special food? Get it on Amazon delivered. So that, that is a good mission and purpose. Yeah. And, and I think um, it's also important for us all to know what our mission is. So hi, Linda. Linda just, just joined us. Um, so I'd be curious to throw it out to anybody listening. Uh, so our mission is to inspire change that changes lives. Gina, I don't want to get your wording wrong. It was about I, my, my working from home. Yeah, I was just being brilliant. But from home, again, that's not a customer focus, but, but it is interesting because, you know, sometimes is your mission or your purpose, can it be a deterrent for some clients that feel like, oh, you guys are, a, you know, everybody works from home. I don't know that that's a big enough company. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's those things I, that doesn't matter anymore. I, I guess it, I guess it really depends whether or not. So, for example, and and then I'd like to throw it. Oh, Bob's here. Dale's here. Um, and then I'd like to throw it out to get some people to share their missions with us. But I think if it's your mission, and and you're worried that your client that it will detract from your client's perception of you. Yeah. I think that's a. I think that that's a problem. I think well, that I think it's good because it gets rid of clients that we wouldn't want to work with because yeah. our mission is I, so not in line with what they what they feel is. I mean, I think I shared that before. I've had a client tell me, "I don't think your your voicemail is professional." And if our corporate office hears it, they may not think that it's professional enough. And I and I worry that oh, I should change it. I should make it more professional. And then I thought, no, then that means I shouldn't work with you guys. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, yeah. and I, I think, and, and I, I think I've shared this too about my family first value or our family first value now in our business. That's not our mission, but it is a value. And all of our clients know right. that we will turn down work if it interferes with our family. So I just want to throw it out there to people who are listening. Uh, do you have a mission for your business? Do you know what it is? And uh, is it is it available? Is it obvious? Do, do, yeah. people, do your customers know? Anybody out there who wants to share what their mission is? Because, you know, there are there are businesses out there, brands out there that are very clearly driven by their mission. Right. Uh, Patagonia. Uh, Patagonia is one. And in fact, um, uh, several years ago, Patagonia changed how they were making their products. I know that it was a huge deal. Everything was going to cost more because the change that they made was aligned with their mission and their values. And they thought that it could ruin the brand and drive away customers. And it didn't precisely because those who shop at Patagonia shop at Patagonia, not just because it's a great product, but because they buy into the mission. And so if your mission Which something that your consumers, your customers can buy into, then I actually think not only does it create a more loyal customer, but it gives us all a little a little leeway. Jim, yeah. um, Jim says, I have a few businesses none related to each other. Well, Jim, is there a mission for any one of those businesses that, that you're clear about? Or uh, Bob or Linda, Linda, I'm going to guess yours is somewhere around making people laugh, but or, or being good humor or have fun. No, I mean, I, I even look at the fact like Tom's shoes. I, I don't own a pair of Tom's shoes. Um, Kirk loves them. 
But look at when Tom's shoes came out. People like me who looked at the shoes are like, it's not like they're the most beautiful shoes. Yeah. But people got behind them because of the, their purpose and their mission. Right. Now, is that enough? Because it do oh. Crocs. Crocs better get a mission because their shoes are so dang ugly, but they're comfortable. So, you know, can you kind of look at it and go, does a mission help a business? Um, it, it, obviously it does, you know, yeah. if people are behind it. The right now, I need to apologize because I've been saying Jim, but that's because I have progressive glasses on. And so when I look down, I don't see very clearly. And so I finally got name is Jill in capital letters, not Jim. So Jill in capital letters, I apologize. I can't see ever now my computer with my progressives on. So, um, uh, Dale says her mission mission is rehumanizing business. Uh, Linda says I'm in the process of rebranding or making my message so clear that it will be obvious. Right now, it's not so clear for people. Sure, I help stressed out and serious grown-ups to find joy, energy, and laughter. So, yeah, that it sounds like you're in the process of of thinking about it. Linda, and I think also that our missions um, or higher purpose or whatever you want to call them need to help differentiate us in the marketplace. So, Linda, I know you're in the in the humor uh, sector, the humor industry. So, if uh, if a business in the humor sector says that their mission is to make people laugh, that's the same. You know that that's what the other people in their industry do. So I guess it's more about going to the heart of what you do. Um, right. And why do you do what you do, or not? Why do you do what you do? You know, because I look at it and go. It's one thing. Like for for example, my goal is always for a client mission. Our mission is to help people spend less time on their marketing. Let you know. Let us take it off the plate. But that's not the purpose of why we started doing what we. Do the way we do right um, the why is because I wanted a business that gave us the flexibility to have our you know back then my family was still young and at home and I wanted to be able to spend time together instead of always at work so you know that was my purpose behind why we do what we do the way we do it but yet my yeah, but that's that's that that's why there's always this conversation and this discussion about what's the difference between mission and purpose right. or your why, um, you know, and those and and there's all kinds of examples. And then we go, is that really a mission? If right. if if I mean, I started a from home business as well for many of the same reasons. But that's not why I do what I do. Why you do what you do, as far as I'm concerned, in your although your internal mission has to do with with uh, letting moms be brilliant from home, your external mission, your client facing mission is clearly about uh, taking marketing uh, off their plates. Right, right. So it's, it's, it's the more you, you up, do that. Yeah, freeing you up to do the real work that has to be done. But yeah, the, but the, the purpose, kind of the, the mission behind what we're doing, the way we do it is to bring together these people who would be sitting at home not being able to be brilliant in a corporate way, um, using their, their skills and their talents because they were forced to make a choice, you know. And, you know, now a lot of times people have to make this choice. Do I stay in the work world and leave my kids or do I work from home and, and yeah. do I stay at home? And so that was kind of what was behind it. But, you know, I, I think it's interesting. Sometimes someone's purpose for what they do is seen as a, a, can be seen as negative. I mean, in that list, um, in that article by Fast Company, it mentioned Ku Klux Klan, which I was like, what? But they said even when it's a really negative um, purpose, people rallied to that. And I, and I thought of a, a, right now in Colorado, it's a huge news story because there's a bakery called Masterpiece Bakery. Masterpiece Wedding Cakes, I think is what it is. Um, but it was just a Supreme Court decision that was um, sent down. This guy five years ago he said his purpose was to create art pieces in the way he designed wedding cakes for celebrating a couple's marriage. Well, five years ago, a gay couple came in and wanted a wedding cake, and he wouldn't make their wedding cake. And, and there was this huge uproar, and, um, and he said, my purpose, my belief, and so it came down to 
um, uh, freedom of religion was his beliefs were um, marriage was between a man and a woman. And so he felt like creating an art piece was not in line with his um, his beliefs. So yeah. it went five years. It was in court and just ruled this this week ruled in his favor in the bakery chamber. So people thought, oh, my gosh, his bakery's going to go under. His bakery has flourished because, like we said, we're going to attract the people that stand for our purpose. And we will repel people who are not in alignment with our purpose. So sometimes your purpose is not popular, but sometimes it is popular. You know, So I think it, it's one of those things that may not have been his marketing move, but it's he did stand for what he believed, even though you know, doesn't yeah. mean everybody has to agree with them. And and I think you were saying earlier when you were telling me about that that his mission, the mission of his business, right. is to make these beautiful art pieces to help people celebrate big occasions in their lives. Right. And so that's his mission. His value, one of his values, is that he doesn't believe in marriage between two men or two women. Or, or any but other. he also said he also will not make a Halloween cake. He makes, and he said. Anybody could come in and buy like different cakes, like a you know Easter cake or a whatever spring cake. But he's not going to do a wedding cake. So yeah, it was interesting. It was a, it brought up that whole concept of what is our purpose? Do we stand for something? You know, Tom Shoes stands for ending, um, you know, helping people in, in situations of poverty have shoes. And um, Warby Parker, same thing. You know, they give glasses to people who can't afford glasses. So sometimes their purpose is not seen sometimes the purpose is not popular so it's i think it's an interesting thing for us to really examine do we really stand for some do we have a purpose for doing what we do the way we do yeah and i i, I i'm going to push back with you a little on this one i don't think purpose is the same as mission i think they're very different True. True. And I, I, I don't know what Warby's mission statement is. I also don't know what Tom's mission statement is. Um, I, I I used to know Tom's. Um, my my brain cells are dying. Um, and I, I I think Tom's mission does say something about the giving back. I think I think that is a very integral to to them. Yeah. I don't think that Warby Parker's oh, mission is. And now I'm going to go check because now I'm curious. Oh, no, because I don't think they miss it as much, but yet they do. Um, that was one of the things. But that they just heard. means it's not their mission. Their mission is the one thing, the one thing that gets them up in the morning. The one thing that gets us up in the morning is to inspire change that changes lives. That's it. That's all we want to go out there. We want to give people courage to make sure that they're thinking differently about what they want to do in their lives and giving them, hopefully giving them the courage um, to do that. Now, um, mission, Linda says mission values purpose. Yes. And, and if you know, there's the other thing that happens with these conversations though, is everybody gets caught up in the semantics um, so, yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then they never move on. So I, there's a couple of other things I want to talk about with this, but um, uh, Bob says closest I can come, uh, to purpose is be well, help out, inspire others. So that, that's a great one that, that would obviously get you out of bed in the morning. Jill, not Jim, Jill says she has one business that's health and welfare of friends and family. One is financial recovery for business. Oh, she has a lot. One is peace of mind for fellow animal lovers. One is a comic relief on past industry via writing a book. So my mission is just being me and encompassing all phases of my life on my terms. That's cool. And That's the first one, the first one about the health and welfare um, of friends, the financial recovery business. I mean, that that definitely, if you have a story that you said, okay, my purpose in life is to help others not go through what I went through or to help others so that they can experience the freedom of, of wealth management. You know, that to me, that is a purpose that drives you every day because you have a story or something that propelled you to get into that. Um, and then, yeah, then we get into the semantics of, and then my mission is to, to do these things to do that in order to do that. But the purpose is kind of the, what drives you to do what you do not necessarily what do I do for clients because that, that could be different. Could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah. And I, and I think Jill, in your case, what I find really interesting. And when I, when I do workshops, often this happens, we do an exercise 
um, uh, called the the why you exercise and we have four questions and the first question there we call them our four to the core and the first question is is about exactly that why do you do what you do it's not phrased that way but basically that's what it gets down to and every so often we get people a little bit like you who are serial entrepreneurs and so it's not so much about their mission for one business as it is about what you do, Jill, it sounds like what you do is you create opportunities and organizations and or communities for people who are struggling with different issues. So that's your mission. It sounds like to me, you look at the world and you figure out where the world need help, needs help, and you create some kind of organization or community that helps them with that. So maybe somewhere in there um, is your mission. And uh, my purpose is to utilize these different passions that I have in a way that can help others. Like yes. I, you know, like you and I was talking about the art, like we have this passion for creating things. Is there a way to monetize that? And then I have this passion for doing something else. Okay. Is there a way to monetize that? I, I can't, I don't know how um, you have, a, you know, I don't have enough brain cells to, to, to do more than one thing at a time. I think. Um, yeah. But, but I think, <laughs> I think one of the important pieces of this conversation about, about mission or purpose or whatever you want to call it um, is that um, the business, your business model and, needs to be aligned with that mission. So number one, if you're not clear on it and the people that you work for aren't clear on it, and in some cases, I guess your customers aren't clear on it, then it's very difficult to know in a decision-making process how you're going to align those decisions. I know in our business, when we're struggling to make a decision, the inspiring change to, to that changes lives comes up all the time. Are we going to do this? Are we going to invest time in this? Well, what are the possibilities that this will inspire change that inspires lives? Will this inspire more change that inspires lives than will this? And so it's really important. And recently, particularly for me, there's been a huge penny that's dropped that with all of my focus on the corporate market, and I'm not saying I'm giving up the corporate market, that I had perhaps... Um, not looked at other opportunities where I could inspire change that changes lives. And so it was a double check that we needed to go back and do that right. um, and look at our business model. So I think the other important question here is, is your business aligned with, with your mission? Because if it isn't, there'll be a lot of disconnects that even your customers will pick up on. Well, I mean, I look at ours and go, if I had a client, and, and we have this, if we have a client that needs people to be on a call multiple times during the week, and I know that our team is made up of people who have kids during the summer that are now running around, yeah. Um, yeah. it's like, no, that doesn't work. You know, I need to, I need to align clients with the community managers whose lifestyle will not have to completely be disrupted because Absolutely. of demands of that particular client. And so those kind of decisions do have to come into play. And we have to look at, you know, so I think each of us, we have to make decisions in our business. Do I, do I need to adapt too much in order to take this type of business or to, to take this project or to work on this? And, new and does taking this project move me away from my mission? Right. And then let's not forget, again, I happen to personally believe that mission, purpose, and values are, are different things, but whatever whatever you call them without the semantics, my mission is to inspire change that changes lives. But Jer and I have some very fundamental values in right. our business. Sure. Uh, family first is one of them. Uh, respect is another. So uh, years ago, I got offered a huge contract, and when I went to the first meeting, the uh, two owners of the company talked about their staff in a way that just horrified me. Uh, as I walked around, as I was given the tour of, of, the, of the enterprise, of the building, I saw things and I turned down the business. Mm -hmm. That didn't get turned down because of my mission, it got turned down because of my values. And so right. Linda says, this is exactly what I'm working on this month and it's the foundation of everything. And it is. It mm -hmm. is. And I think the difficulty when you're in the process of working through this is not to get caught up in the semantics, but whatever you call them to understand that there is a difference. The mission is the overarching reason 
purpose that Gina, as Gina calls it, that you have your business. And that if something doesn't help you accomplish that, you shouldn't be doing it. And then underneath that, you have your values or your principles or your guiding philosophies or whatever you want to call them that also are there for to help you align the business decisions in your life. Uh, Jill says, I think businesses need to reach out to the community more than they are, be it chamber, city, community councils, local government, resource and learn. And I, I think that's absolutely true. Wow. Uh, Jill, we, that we, I mean, need all have to, we need to look at our business. And is there something that we are passionate about, but maybe we haven't pulled that in and, and, a, and got our business behind that? Um, you know, kind of the thing of where do we give back and how do we, um, you know, we support a bunch of small business things through uh, microloans through Kiva. So part of our business, the financial part of our business is that money comes from our profit and goes to this Kiva um, accounts that we have set up and they have to be distributed and we support these small business microloans. And that could be something, again, whether you publicize it or not, I think those type of things are so much good that could be done. So what is our business really? What is the purpose in our business? And I think, you know, nonprofits always rank high on, on those lists and, um, you know, nonprofits rank high because people feel like there's something to say. Now, most business people will tell me, well, my business kind of is nonprofit. I'm not making money. But you know, but you, but you look at it and say, how do you get people to get behind your purpose? And maybe that does not that we do it so that people will be drawn to it, but the right people are drawn to us. Yeah, and I think the right people will be. As I thought this through today, I thought, well, I'm I'm going to do uh, uh, I'm going to write an article on this because I I really just I think it's so important, and um, I thought of the. Uh, subject line is your mission missing in action and so I thought that's fun MIA missing in action and then I thought MIA could stand for mission in action so oh, like your mission in action once you know what your mission is is. Are you putting it into action? Are you communicating that message if you would like to communicate that message? Are your business decisions aligned with it? So I decided that MIA means mission in action as a missing in yeah. action. And okay. that's what we strive for, for our mission not to be missing in action. Is your mission in action? That's a, And then how can you put your mission in action? In action. And maybe even use that as a more, because I've never really public, publicly, obviously when we work with people, they know. But but I think you should, you know, look, yeah. my personal opinion is that that would make your brand even more interesting. I actually think that customers knowing that that's your mission to yeah. help all of these women be brilliant from home differentiates you from other people out there. And right. as you pointed out at the beginning of this conversation, if some customers weren't going to come because, oh, they're too small, yeah. then they're not the right yeah. customers for you. Yeah. Exactly. I firmly believe that. Oh, I agree. I mean, you and I, we've talked about that. I think we talked about on the show. We used to play tapes in the background, cassette tapes of noises of office because we wanted to appear professional. And now it's like, uh, my dogs will be barking. I'm, I'm here in Arizona with no dogs. That's why it's silent. Oh, that's why it's quiet. <laughs> and my truck is gone. Yeah. But I mean, now it's kind of like, no, this is who we are. Like, this yeah. is, I'm able to be brilliant from anywhere, not from an office, you know. So I think it's important to do that. And, and we had a client who, um, this wasn't so much about her mission, but it was about the personality of her business. She was in one of our, our sessions and uh, we worked with her a bit and she said, I can't, I can't, I'll lose clients. She did. She lost clients. She gained the right clients. Right. And uh, Jared will have to remind me, but 27% increase in sales uh, in the first six months, 29% uh, increase in uh, proper in uh, offers and possibilities in the pipeline. So I think when we're true to our mission, that yep. great things happen. Now, Peggy, hello. It's nice that you're out there. Mission in action. Yes, I love it. And I was sitting there and I, I'm sitting out on the dock because I'm was i at the cottage and I thought, 
hmm, I might be some, on to something here. Yeah. So that's definitely going to be the title yeah, of a blog or a blog or a book or something. I'm all excited right. about it. Uh, Ellen loves it. Thank you. Uh, Linda LeClaire. Oh, my God, Tony. I never say mission. I know what it is, but I never say it. I'm afraid it might look too woohoo. So here's the thing. you got to know who your target audience is. you got to know who your target audience is. Uh, I, I read a lot of things from Marie Forleo. And, you know, she's got a little hearts on there and she, you know, my spidey sense. And there are times when I go, oh, I'm done. I'm done. Um, but, but she's making a ton more money than I am and is very clear on her target market. And quite frankly, I am not her target market. So if it's too woohoo, there may be another way to word it, Linda, but also keep in mind who that mission is for. And in some cases, nobody's going to know about your mission, although I believe that they should. So it may not matter if it sounds woohoo, but um, if I have the right people, most missions are woohoo. You'll attract the right people. I think the more we can stay true to our passion, our purpose, our mission, the more we attract the right people to our business. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, again, all these businesses that were ranked in that, in that Fast Company article – um, not everybody believes and stands behind the purpose that they stand for. Well, that's great. They're not all going to be customers. But, but the people who matter do. And, right. and I also think, you know, I look out and, and I, I know we, we get some younger people listening to this, and that's great. But, I, but a lot of the people who I know watch Wine Down, I find that the, that, that, that the more life I go through, the more my mission matters. Yeah. Because, because I just don't have the energy anymore. I don't, I don't want to attract people who don't get what we're doing. Yeah. I really don't. And it doesn't matter how much money they pay me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So yeah. I, I also think that when we remind ourselves of our mission, just like Jer and I have done over the last few weeks, and you stop and go, what, what could my business look like over the next three to five years? that would help us be more aligned with our mission. When you start to ask yourself that question, then we stop doing this and just looking at the business model we have and we start doing this. Yeah. And we go, what business model could we have just by reminding ourselves uh, what our mission is. Yeah. And so I think it's always good to check in on the bottom line. I think it's always good to check in on the strategic objectives always good to check in on the values but that mission folks for me that's the one thing that is the umbrella over everything we do i agree mission and in action it's mission in action and it is um uh 233 so we have run on and uh i want to say I, know, I, I realize that when I host, I do a lot of ahs because then I'm I'm looking at what's going on and there's a comment up there. So anyway, I get distracted. Multitasking, yeah. I call people Jim instead of Jill and then it's a mess. But I'd like to wish everybody a great weekend. One of the things that you could think about this weekend is what is your mission? Is your business aligned with your mission? Is there anything you could be doing that would be more aligned with your mission? That's three things, not one thing. And mission in action. And how to put your mission into action. Absolutely. So goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. We will see you next week on Wind Down, where Gina will be hosting, and I won't be umming and awing as much. So have a great weekend, everybody. And we're going off the air. Bye. Bye.